motion by the Hawkeyes. Jock with a jump shot on the run, and the lane is good. Peter Jock gets the Hawks out on the scoreboard first. They pitch it inside for Hammonds. Now it's poked away from behind. He comes up with a steal. Jock shooting in transition. And good. Up. Peter Jock, two for two. Wow, he is playing at such a high level, Gary. And I'm going to give him credit for that steal. He knocked it loose, but good work by both those players. Jared has a shot blocked by Swanigan. Swanigan's going the other way. Jared Utah behind the back dribble by the big 6'10 guy. Wonderful pass. He lays it in off the glass. Here's Hammond running in transition. And the teeter-totter continues to go one way and then the other. Thompson for three in the tie, and it's good. And Purdue has really roared back with the three-point goal. Jock for three. Gasol yeah! jump shot, no good. This is badly. Rebound tipped on by Ewell to Woodbury, up and in. The Hawkeyes trail the Boilermakers 35-33. Utah, Swanigan, in his face, Jared shoots up to the top of the six foot ten, outstretched arms, and drains a three. The Hawks have run in the first eight points of the half. It's 41-35 Iowa. No good. Utah clears along the baseline. 6-9, Jared Utah trots into the front court. All the way to the basket, dunks it through with the left hand. Jared Utah and Purdue's come unglued for the moment. This might be the most impressive start to any half we've seen all year, Bobby. Back and forth we go. Here's Thompson, picked by Jock. Jock's got one man to beat. Races into the front court, score it, and a foul call as he was nudged from behind by Edwards. The Hawks are back up 14. Here's Jock, jump shooting left wing. Good. That is so funny. Iowa has its biggest lead. This has been some kind of kicking by the Hawkeyes here in the second half against a really, really good, strong Purdue team. Third by Ewell to Jock into the front court. Jump shot good. Peter Jock. He doesn't know what the rim feels like. Final score, Iowa 83, Purdue 71. The Hawkeyes have now won six of seven Big Ten games by double digits. You know, that's what the great teams do. They go out and they take care of business. I'm really proud of you. And what do we say? This makes the next one bigger, All right? That was a good one. We're originally from Sudan, and Sudan has a long history of wars. Life was pretty much all about violence. I lost my dad when I was six years old. Um, my little brother was four then, uh, Peter. And things changed from there. I don't really remember a lot about Sudan. Uh, I just remember a little bit about Uganda. After my dad died, we moved to Uganda as refugees. My grandmother, who was then in Iowa, found a sponsor in Des Moines, Iowa, St. Ambrose Cathedral. For the first six months we came to America, they would support us uh, with rent, with food, everything else. We came December 9th, 2003, with the clothes that we wore and nothing else. I came across the Jock family via Peter. I was putting together a fourth grade basketball team for my son and was looking for some kids to play basketball. Mike Nixon had an AAU team called the Riders and it was his kid and then a bunch of his friends. He um, came and talked to my mom. He said he wanted me to play for him, but uh, I didn't want to play. My mom and him made me go to a few practices just to see how it is and I hated it. But he took the whole team to McDonald's after that. I fell in love with McDonald's right away. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stay on the basketball team. I'm just gonna stay just to eat McDonald's. <laughs> Here we go, Pete! Here's basketball progression started pretty quickly. 
Peter was named to the All-State basketball team, even only playing or practicing for a couple of weeks. By the end of his fifth grade year, was probably the best player in the state at that point. Eighth grade, that's when I realized I need to take this basketball thing serious because, I mean, it could take me up places I've never been before. He was pretty heavily recruited by the time he was in ninth grade. North Carolina, Duke, KU, ISU, Marquette, Illinois, Iowa State, Iowa, uh, Louisville. A good friend of mine, John Gallagher, the head coach at Hartford, was an assistant at Penn at the time. The day that I was hired, uh, my cell phone is burning up, as you can imagine. I saw John's name come up, so I, I said, hey, John, what's up? Peter Jock, you got to get him, was the first thing out of his mouth. He said, oh, we just signed his brother here at Penn. He's the number one player in America. And then his career took an interesting turn. His ninth grade year, he was one of the 30 freshman kids in the country that had been invited to the Nike camp in St. Louis. We were scrimmaging, and uh, I tore my patella tendon. And had no idea how significant the recovery process was from that type of an injury, basically two years. As soon as I got the surgery, it was like everything just disappeared. A lot of people took back their scholarships. They didn't think I was going to be the same player anymore. Personally, I was like, it's over. My father's name is Duke Jock. He was a captain in the Sudanese People's Liberation Army. And he said, this is the right thing for me to die for, to liberate South Sudan. It was in the morning. I was helping my dad farm. One of my aunts came, and she said that she hadn't seen her son in days. So right away, my dad said, go home. I will go look for him. He dropped everything. Uh, that's the last time I saw him, you know, walking off. We ran about the whole day, and around three, two people came, one of them in the front, another one in the back, holding a bed sheet, you know, a stick, holding its front end of the stick and the back end of the stick, and there's a body wrapped in a bed, a bed sheet. When my dad died, the consolation was that my whole family, they were saying that he's not dead, that Dao is alive. For them, that's how they mourn, right? So ever since he died, I became my dad to my family. I was little when my dad died, so I mean, I don't, I don't remember a lot about that at all. We never talked about my dad's death, and part of it on my part is intentional. I don't want him to experience that. I want him to live his life. I want him to enjoy his, what I would call innocence, in his childhood. I wouldn't be where I am right now without Doc or Mike Nixon, because they really took the mail roll for my dad. So growing up, I had to look up to both of them. I think the question about Peter and, and not having his father during those formative years was one that I saw for myself personally. I lost my father when I was 10. And so I understood what some of the things that Peter might be going through. When I found out I had to get a surgery, my brother and Mike, they kept motivating me. It was like, you're gonna get back 100%. It's gonna be a process, but you just gotta keep working hard. There was actually a few schools that stayed loyal to me the whole time. The relationship Peter and Fran developed was built on Fran's loyalty to Peter. Obviously, he had some concerns still about the injury, but he was always loyal to him. The night I went to see him his junior year, it would have been real easy to walk away. I mean, he was bad. But fortunately, I had seen him great. So I knew he had it in him. So that helped me. My senior year, I started feeling better. I was doing stuff that I used to do. We went up to watch him work out. He made every shot. He was dunking the ball again, moving his feet well. We sign him, and he goes out and earns Mr. Basketball. So it looked like a brilliant move. Dow played basketball at Penn. Since Fran McCaffrey played at Penn too, Iowa arranged to have a basketball game in which Penn would come to Iowa City to play. You kind of say, wow, right? Look at it, where we started. Now we're playing in front of 12, 14, 15,000 people. My brother had a heck of a game. I think he missed maybe one shot. <laughs> maybe he didn't miss at all. I went 0 for 6 or 3. <laughs> um, but 
What was most needed by that is the Iowa fans. They were cheering for me the whole time. And I always remember that. For not only myself, but the whole Jock family and my family. Unbelievable experience to go watch that game. Peter is able to play college basketball at a high level because people like Mike Nixon. He loved me like his kid, so I know he loves me. I look at him as my second dad. Without him, I would not be where I'm at right now. He told me nothing is easy, but if you just keep working and put your mind where, uh, where you want to go, the sky's the limit. When he first got here, he was good. He was not elite. Now he's elite. Here's Jock. And after two years of not being able to make shots, finally finding his stroke in his junior season. Any coach, you know, takes a lot of pride in watching the young guy figure it out. It brings me a lot of joy when he's out there having fun, where he's enjoying playing. That's what it's about. We're privileged more than others. There are people that have been through worse things than us, without a doubt. So there are some Sudanese who um, went through things that are unimaginable. It makes me more appreciative of where we are. Iowa's looking to maintain sole possession of first place in the Big Ten, while Maryland in a third place tie. Tonight is why you play the game. This place is electric, Gary. It's got an NCAA tournament type of feel to it. Dribble around Gasell with a basket layup good, and a foul called on Woodbury. Mello at his best. Boy, he attacked the rim hard. Here's a cutting Pete Jock. Scores off glass. He'll take it coast to coast. Oh, wide open left corner with a three. Yes! Jake Lehman for three. Nobody's come up for air yet. They're getting after each other. Maryland penetration really ruling the day right now. Carter hands it off the triple. Another three ball. Yes! And the roof coming off the building, 34-29. Shot with an air ball. It was a terrible shot, both feet on that three-point line. Terrible choice. Five threes for Maryland and one for the Hawkeyes. And Iowa shoots 41% from three-point range. From the left corner, they'll come back with a three, and that time they drained it. Deep left corner by Dom Ewell. Clemens in the front court for Giselle. The jock in the corner, three. Good by Peter Jock. Iowa has fought back from eight down and has the lead back by one. This has been a good game, back and forth, and it's yeah. been tight. Well, whose offense is going to solve the other's defense first? Suleiman on the breakaway, around the defender, and the reverse for the right hand is good. He went right around Dom Yule with a tremendous play. Clemens on the right wing. This is down low on the block. They give it back to Clemens. Clemens penetrates into the paint. Oh, the floater with the right hand is good. It can't be that easy down That's the stretch. too easy. Carter to Suleiman, had a notion, drives inside off the glass with a runner, it's good, and he's fouled in the basket count. Uh, Rashid Suleiman, what a game he's putting together here. 130 to go in this game. Terps hang it on. With two point lead, trying to pull the upset. The diamond stone, he went right around the defender. Dom Yule took one giant step, and he gets his first field goal of the second half. And it's the other end. Here's Lehman on the breakaway. Lehman, a skip pass goes to Nickens with a left hand. And left. It's gone. And Maryland holds off the Hawkeyes. 74 to 68. Let's go, Maryland!
I don't think we play as well as we're capable of playing. I'm going to give Merlin credit for that. We didn't play our best game, and we're still right there with two minutes to go. So I think that says something about the character of our team.